sharpen pencils, clear your desk. It's time to increase your nerdiness with Derek. And yes, hello, I am your host, Derek W. Truesdale, helping you to increase your nerdiness in small bite-sized doses. <laughs> bites. Somebody punch me next time I make a pun that bad. It was really bad. Anyhow, we're going to move right into the topic this week, which is uh, frame serving. It's a very powerful tool. It, it can give you a lot of goodies. And we're actually going to be learning by doing. Frame serving, it, it, it could be... You could tell someone that what it is, and they're like, uh, yeah, okay, I get it, whatever. Why would I ever need that? We're going to have some good examples tonight. Now, I'm thankful that we already laid some groundwork. We kind of know what a codec does. It takes a bunch of raw video and then squashes it down into some secret-coded gobbledygook. And then it gets um, decoded again into more video. Now, let's talk about that for a second. Let's say you have uh, video from your camera that you edited and you just made one little change to it. Uh, you you uh, added a border or put up a, a, a text overlay or something. And now guess what? You have to re-render the entire video. Because when when you think about it, Remember, the codec takes the raw video that you took from your camera and it, it squashes it down into some sort of secret code. Now, you can't just take that secret code and add text on it or something. You have to decode the entire frame, make some kind of change to it, and then at the end, you're re-encoding it again. That, you're, you're basically doing that when you edit video and apply little effects to it. And... The other foundation we laid was about color spaces. And I was talking about the, how we have YUV color and RGB. Now, now that we know about those two color spaces and how one of them has subsampled color, you should also know that you lose quality when you convert to RGB and then back to TV color. You lose quality. We also know that it takes longer and RGB can slow down your system. I got that in one of the comments last time about using fraps in RGB mode. So we know that extra color space conversions can slow things down and also they um, <clears throat> you can lose quality in the process. So the cool thing about AVI synth, we're going to be using it a little bit today and uh, I'll, I'll be talking in more detail about some of the things that can be done. But AVI synth is pretty much the best way to demonstrate the value of frame serving and what it is. Let's say there's a video I have to convert with, with some minor changes, but I, I don't want it to take too long. And also, I want to maintain some quality. So here's, for example, one of the... the um, files I would convert for movie night on the Truesdale show. Here's the video. It's bigshow.flv. That's what I have here in uh, VLC player, which is pretty awesome. And as you can see, there are some horses running around and stuff. But for my purposes, I actually, I broadcast in widescreen, so I'll have to be changing that eventually. Um... And it's a little too big for web streaming for me because my computer can't handle large resolutions until I buy a nice faster machine, which I, sh I should probably do soon. I think it's about time for an upgrade. But anyway, it needs to be a smaller web size. Uh, and also, most people aren't really watching it back in full screen, so it, it doesn't have to be that huge. And why waste CPU cycles? Anyhow, I'm going to make a couple changes to this actual video file. You can see is the FLV right there. So I'm going to be using AVI synth to frame serve this, and then I'm going to encode it quickly with just a couple changes. So what I have here is this little text document called convert.avs, which I use to convert it. It's an AVI synth script. So don't let this stuff scare you. You don't have to understand all this at once. I'm just trying to give a nice 
big picture view of what we're trying to accomplish because I think doing is the best way to learn sometimes. So let's open up this thing. Um, I've got it all labeled the purpose of the stuff I'm doing. You can ignore this bit at the end where all it's doing is I'm, I'm making it show the frame number, which will be useful for instructional purposes. And then I've got some crop and resizing stuff that we'll be playing around with. Anyhow, the important thing is the first thing we're going to do is load this video up. So AVI Synth has uh, built in a lot of plugins for loading up videos. And you can also get external filters. And there, it's some kind of a source. There's like wave source for audio. AVI source for AVIs. And MPEG, MPEG2 source. Stuff like that. Well, I happen to be using FF Video Source. And I've got a whole bunch of junky variables and stuff. Don't let, Let's kind of ignore that for now. And uh, the important thing is, is this is our AVI Synth script. So here's the video file. Here's the script. Okay. And it's just this little one kilobyte document. But the cool thing about this is you can use this uh, program called Virtual Dub. I happen to prefer Virtual Dub Mod because it's got a couple extra features and stuff. Anyway, you can drag in this script and just drop it right there on Virtual Dub. And that's what I have here. And this brings up the movie. And you can see I've, I've got us on some frame where a guy's riding a horse around. And uh, let, let's start making a couple changes to this. Remember, I have to resize it, make it a little smaller and so on and so forth. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring up our script editor. Now you can go to file, script editor, or whatever, but I happen to know it's control E, so I'm going to push that right now. And this brings up our script that's actually running the, the movie. And it's kind of, any line that is uh, commented out, it kind of has grayed out, so you can figure out what's doing what. And the only thing I really have active is loading up the video. And then I have this cropping thing. Now, I'm going to try to not confuse this with uh, CSS syntax. But we have a command. Not surprisingly, it's called crop. Let's say there was a, a, an extra little black line right here at the top or on the sides. Well, you can crop that out very easily while staying in the YUV color space. This is one of the cool things about AVI Synth. You can avoid color space conversions for doing little simple things like this. Anyhow, you have the crop command, you have a set of parentheses, and then you have the variables. So you can crop, starting here, from the left, from the top, from the right, and from the bottom. So let's say we wanted to crop to this guy's cowboy hat about if there's an ugly black line or something okay well on the left we're gonna crop zero on the top here we're just gonna say 30 we're gonna crop 30 pixels off the top now I'm gonna push F5 and this will refresh with the changes and you can see now this dudes cowboy hat is, is cropped all the way down to there and it's simple as that. I mean, you could just make little changes like this. Now I'm going to do some resizing. And uh, I'm just going to... I'll actually resize this to 320 by 240. Okay? Now the important thing is it's a resize. There are a few different kinds of resizes. If you're not really sure, just use bicubic resize. You'll be fine. Just for additional information, there is... Um, well, there's a point resize that's more blocky. Uh, there's um, a length zos resize, which tends to be better for, for example, resizing screen capture footage. Okay? Anyway, I have bicubic resize, and then separated by a comma in the parentheses, I have, we want it to be 320 by 240. So I'm going to push F5 to refresh. And you can see that now the, the frame is smaller. It's a nice 320 by 240 video. So that's all we're doing with, with frame serving. And uh, just like in the command prompt, it let's imagine it's a command prompt. We're kind of entering one line at a time in order 
except we can script it out with this AVI synth script. So that's the power of that. Okay, so that's frame serving in action. And that's the cool thing about AVI synth. You can use it just to make small changes to your video while staying in YUV color space. And what this does is it allows you to, it, it goes faster, and also you can maintain higher quality as you just make little tweaks. Now, the other way you can use frame serving is on the way out of your editor. For example, let's say you're using an editor that has limited export settings or not quite the customization and the power that you want if you're a user like me who's interested in all the settings and how they work. Well, what you can do is install this thing called Debug Mode Frame Server. If you just search for it, you'll find it. And it allows you to, it installs this sort of a pseudo codec. And so as you render out, you choose a debug mode frame server file. And it makes this AVI, this actually a frame serving thing. And then you could load that AVI into a different program. You could use something more powerful like Mencoder or FFmpeg, your tool of choice. You could even play it with Windows Media Player as long as your system can render this in real time, of course. I've even used Debug Mode Frame Server for Sony Vegas because I have the Platinum Edition. It's not Pro. I love it, but one of the limitations is it only gives you four video tracks. And sometimes I need just a fifth one or maybe a couple more. So I'll actually render out as one of these debug mode frame server files. And then I'll open another instance of Sony Vegas. So remember, you have one Vegas frame serving and it thinks it's rendering the video. Meanwhile, you've got another Sony Vegas which thinks it's getting an AVI file. So one frame at a time, it pulls a frame from the other sequence, and this opens up the possibility to get extra video tracks. So that's the usefulness of frame serving. Hopefully it has made a lot more sense for you to see it in action, and it really shows how powerful a tool it is. Now, I, I can get more in-depth in AVI synth and its syntax, and I'll, I'll be doing that pretty soon, I'm sure. But uh, it, at least I, I hope I gave you a good flavor for frame serving. Well, I'm Derek W. Truesdale. If you want to find this podcast up to a week earlier, you can watch it as it's recorded live. You can get that at DerekForPresident.com. And also it has links to the blog and the YouTube, the audio version, whatever you need, check it out there. And we'll see you next time. Sharpen pencils, clear your desk. It's time to increase your nerdiness with Derek.